we started this day as a normal day of any of the days that we do at work. At around 11.30, our lives changed forever. June 9, 2009, the ConAgra Slim Jim plant near Garner, North Carolina. A catastrophic explosion resulted from the accumulation of dangerous levels of natural gas during indoor purging of new piping. You think come an emergency, you're just going to jump on top of things and you're going to be just like the TV and, you know, Superman and save everybody. It's funny, it gets surreal. And I, I couldn't even remember how to dial 911. February 7th, 2010. The clean energy power plant under construction in Middletown, Connecticut. A devastating explosion occurred when natural gas was used to clean piping during a gas blow. Two deadly blasts, eight months and hundreds of miles apart. The cause of both accidents, common but dangerous practices that release natural gas near work areas. The Chemical Safety Board found that the tragic accidents at Conagra Foods and Clean Energy were caused by planned and intentional natural gas releases. There are safe alternatives to the hazardous practices that cause both accidents and we believe they should be used. The accident at ConAgra Foods Slim Jim production plant occurred during the installation and commissioning of a new gas-fired industrial water heater manufactured by Energy Systems Analysts, or ESA. Several days prior to the accident, a new steel gas pipe was connected to a natural gas supply pipe located on the roof of the plant. The newly installed gas pipe ran over 120 feet along the roof and then down into a utility room where the new water heater was located. The new gas piping was pressure tested with air to check for leaks along with the existing supply pipe. No leaks were found. ConAgra employees then used natural gas to purge or remove air from the supply pipe prior to use. Attaching a temporary hose to the supply pipe, ConAgra workers vented the flammable gas directly outdoors. However, they did not purge the air from the new steel pipe leading to the water heater. On the day of the accident, an ESA worker was attempting to remove air from this new piping prior to lighting the heater. But ConAgra did not always require piping to be purged outdoors. The gas supply valve on the roof was opened. Then the ESA worker opened a valve near the water heater, allowing gases to escape through an opening in the pipe. However, he was unable to light the heater and evidently concluded that this was caused by air remaining in the pipe. So he continued venting the pipe intermittently into the utility room over two and one half hours. But the air had left the pipe and invisible natural gas began entering the room. No one used combustible gas detectors to monitor the atmosphere. Instead, workers used an unreliable practice. They trusted their sense of smell to warn them of the presence of natural gas. They were unaware that the gas had built up to a dangerous level inside the building. Shortly before 11.30 a.m., the natural gas found one of several potential ignition sources, perhaps an electrical device, and ignited, causing a catastrophic explosion. The building construction included prefabricated concrete roofing slabs known as double T's, weighing about 12 tons each. Many of these double T's came crashing down to the floor more than 20 feet below, injuring and trapping workers. More than half of the roof either collapsed or was severely damaged. Four people were killed, including the ESA employee, who died due to burn injuries over five months later. A total of 67 people were sent to the hospital, including three for life-threatening burns. Among those killed was Deborah Petaway's 33-year-old son, Lewis Watson, 
who worked with his mother at the plant. Ms. Petaway, a longtime ConAgra employee, spoke directly to CSB board members during a public meeting held eight months after the accident. Lewis Watson, he was my son. He was my only son. And now he's gone. And I can't hear or see him anymore. If somebody don't look into it now, it's going to happen again. During the ConAgra investigation, we looked into the practice of purging natural gas indoors. And what we found was that this practice resulted in a number of catastrophic incidents across the nation. These incidents resulted in severe injuries and in some cases fatalities. And the agency as a whole became very concerned that the practice of purging natural gas indoors was a lot more commonplace than we initially thought. Accidents caused by purging include a May 2008 explosion at a Hilton hotel under construction in San Diego, California, that injured 14 workers. New piping was purged indoors without monitoring the atmosphere for flammable gases. Natural gas often has an odor added to it, mercaptan, and this odor is put there so that people can recognize when natural gas is present. However, people don't realize that they can become desensitized to odor. The CSB also noted that new gas pipes and containers can remove the odorant from natural gas, an effect known as odor fade. One of the lessons we've learned from ConAgra and some of these similar incidents is that people cannot rely on their sense of smell to know when a gas is present. Instead of using their sense of smell, employees should be using combustible gas detectors to monitor the atmosphere for dangerous levels of natural gas. The CSB made urgent recommendations to several code organizations, including the National Fire Protection Association, or NFPA, to require purged gases to be directly vented to safe locations outdoors, require the use of combustible gas monitors during purging, and warn workers against relying on odor alone for detecting gas releases. In August 2010, the NFPA agreed to an emergency code change. I am pleased that the National Fire Protection Association made our CSP recommendation a high priority and took immediate steps to improve the National Fuel Gas Code. Just two days after the board issued its ConAgra urgent recommendations, another deadly explosion occurred as the result of a planned, intentional natural gas release. In February 2010, construction was almost finished on the new clean energy natural gas-fueled power plant in Middletown, Connecticut. New piping had been installed from the natural gas supply line to massive, precisely constructed turbines that generate electricity. Because debris such as rust or welding slag can remain in the pipes after construction, pipes must be cleaned to ensure that the debris does not damage the turbine blades. At Clean Energy, this was accomplished through a series of gas blows. Large volumes of high-pressure natural gas were forced through piping to blow out debris directly into the atmosphere. On Sunday, February 7th, workers prepared for the natural gas blows and made efforts to control potential ignition sources outside of the power generation building. But ignition sources are difficult to completely eliminate. In addition, metal debris expelled from piping can strike other objects, causing sparks that can ignite the gas. More than 150 workers were at the plant that day, including over 50 inside the power generation building. Only about 15 of the 50 were actually involved in conducting the gas blows. Beginning at 7.30 a.m., gas and debris were released from a number of open pipes just outside the power generation building. 15 gas blows took place that day over a four-hour period. Gas company records show that some two million standard cubic feet of natural gas were released to the atmosphere that morning, enough to fuel a typical American home every day for more than 25 years. Around 11.15 a.m., gas was blown through an open pipe into a congested outdoor area 
next to the power generation building. The natural gas accumulated to dangerous levels, contacted an ignition source, and exploded. Six people were killed, and at least 50 were injured. The CSB believes that the use of flammable natural gas in gas blows is inherently unsafe, and alternative methods should be used. During our investigation of the incident, we found that it was troublesome how common the practice was. The CSB found that although blowing out pipes with natural gas is seen as convenient, there are many readily available safer alternatives. For example, General Electric's a major turbine manufacturer has been recommending since 1999 to their customers to do air blows. Other alternatives include blowing with non-flammable nitrogen or using a cleaning device called a pig pushed by air. These methods avoid the danger of fire or explosion. The CSB found that despite the existence of safer alternatives, blowing out pipes with flammable natural gas is still the most popular method. Since 2001, this practice has led to at least two other fires and explosions at gas power plants. We learned that a lot of natural gas power plants are being constructed in the next few years. So the potential for a repeat accident like what happened at Clean is, is very real. The CSB noted that the Occupational Safety and Health Administration has not issued a standard that addresses the safe handling of natural gas. Following the tragedy at Clean Energy, the CSB made 18 urgent safety recommendations to regulators and other organizations. The CSB called on OSHA to develop a standard on fuel gas safety to prohibit natural gas blows, ban purging flammable gases indoors, and prohibit work activities where a flammable atmosphere could develop. The CSB also recommended that the NFPA and American Society of Mechanical Engineers change their codes to require the use of inherently safer alternatives to natural gas blows. Finally, the board urged major gas turbine manufacturers to provide their customers with comprehensive technical guidance on safe alternatives to natural gas blows. Unfortunately, serious accidents involving intentional releases of fuel gases continue. In July 2010, an explosion rocked the U.S. steel plant in Clareton, Pennsylvania, injuring 12 workers. Under an approved work plan, employees opened a flange on a live coke oven gas pipe, releasing the flammable gas into a congested work area where it ignited and exploded. The main lesson is the importance of using safer alternative methods for conducting work activities, particularly uh, flammable gas should not be released in the vicinity of workers and sources of ignition. In Connecticut, that lesson is being adopted. As recommended by the CSB, the state's governor issued an executive order banning the use of natural gas blowers during power plant construction. The action taken by the state of Connecticut to ban gas blows to clean fuel gas piping is a model for the rest of the country in terms of protecting workers. The deadly accidents at Clean Energy and ConAgra Foods were entirely preventable. At the Chemical Safety Board, it is our hope that the standards will be put in place to require safer practices, which we believe will save lives. For more information on the CSB's investigations into the accidents at ConAgra Foods and Clean Energy, please visit csb.gov.